All right, Steph, I'm just here with a little um, late April garden tour. Just wanted to show you some of the bulbs. Um, these are all filled. These were all a mix. Um, so these are some double tulips, though they kind of, yeah, they come up like tulips. They're early bloomer. And there's some random tulips that are just like kind of, I randomly threw in here a few years ago that are coming up. So that's super exciting. And there's some pansies that I put in. Um, over here in the warm bed, there's like a yellow tulip I don't remember planting. So this probably has been here longer than I have. Um, and then these are the daydream tulips that I planted last fall. Like a shrewdy orange. It's coming up across a lot more bright than it is. It's very pretty. It's very pretty. So um, there's these are some red knockout rose coming in beautifully. Um, that is a quick fire hydrangea leafing out. There's some flax leafing out on Joy Sedum. Um, I think these are purple prints tulips, I want to say. I um, can't remember. Some things I just kind of just threw in. And, I don't know. Kind of was just like, oh, we'll see. So I have some daylilies here. Um, and then I'm going to back up and show you. So I did expand this bed, as you can see, this, like the line of demarcation where all the perennials are. So in here, there'll be um, tons of zinnias and uh, maybe some uh, dahlias as well. Not sure on the dahlias because then I'd have to stake it. Um, I might do all the dahlias in the front and in the, in the back, and I'll show you that. So I'll show you the back. So this forsythia only bloomed really well once for us, which is fine. It gets really out of control, so my husband does prune on it a lot. And I do use um, the stems for cutting uh, quite a bit as a filler. So um, this is more for privacy and for uh, for cutting fillers um, than like for the you know two week summer spring blooms over here excuse, excuse that tarp we have um, something that we're selling we gotta keep it covered anyway um, so here against the shed there are some tulips and daffodils it gets an interesting lighting situation so I've done begonias here in the summer and they did really well I leave a comment down below that you think I should do here this year um, probably gonna do annuals just because the autumn joyce needle was free and it does fine so it will stay um don't know if i should do cosmos and kind of latch them up to the side or if i should do nasturtium was another thing i was thinking so let me know in the comments what do you think i should do in that spot um most likely it'd be annuals from seed that's what i'm trying to focus on just because of my recovery i'm not really getting to the garden centers like i typically do um but that's that so as you can see, this side is much farther pine than the other side. The sedums are smaller, the daffodils are blooming, and the tulips are budded. So that's another thing is that there's, it's very different lighting situations on each side. So um, I know the begonias, you can do sun or shade. So those are kind of an easy one. Um, but I do want to kind of maybe switch it up. Over here, <laughs> it's pretty much a hot mess, things that need to get. Um, like tons of weeds that need to be pulled. Um, I'm not able to do it because I just had a major surgery done a couple, like about a week ago. And I'm on my feet fine, but I'm not supposed to bend, so I'm not, I'm not bending. Um, I do need to move, so I was figured I'll move with my camera and say hi to you guys. Um, so these hydrangeas are all coming back really strong. So I'm super excited. I think it's gonna be a really great year for hydrangeas and um, if you are not a subscriber I encourage you to subscribe and see kind of the transformation um, of this bed. So again I'm in central Connecticut zone 6a 6b I don't really know at this point um, zone 6 is what I call it and um, yeah I mean I don't I haven't been gardening long, but I do love to just kind of share for my own sake, just kind of see how far it's come along. And uh, if there's any way I can help, I encourage you, let me know. So here we have um, some peony that's popping up. Some These are the roses that I got from Walmart. Um, hyacinths, these are about to get cut back. Uh, lots of stuff coming back. So even this uh, Wajila 
it like dies back to the ground every year but it's beautiful and it's hanging on so as long as it wants to stay i feel like it breaks dormancy so late though for being a spring blooming shrub but anyway um so it's coming back yay good to stay there was i did plant a caryoptris there it died completely it's fried um so that i had to pull um there's that came back what is that it's an astilbe a black astilbe over the moon i don't know something moon proven winners um clarence plant bought that it's right there um, and that's coming back um these are purple prints these tulips were all a mix from costco last year so if they're purple they're purple prints if they're not they're part of a mix and i don't know they look like red impressions to me and pink impressions um beautiful darwin tulips coming in the second year in the ground um there's some allium foliage coming up uh boxwoods that i planted are all doing really well candy corn spirea again I, I cut that back so far i don't really need to but part of me is like dude the new growth is so pretty <laughs> I almost I just want it to stay this color like always um, here's some invasive weeds in case you, you wanted to see those um, some dying dying <laughs> since again then there's so I planted this um, rose and that peony so this peony it's definitely a more established this one was coming out of the ground fine so I knew where it was this one I knew I planted over here but I didn't know where so um, I don't know what to do because I don't they're they, they're planted way too close together so part of me is like the rose is a lot easier to move at this point um I can totally do that while the foliage of everything else dies back it's not like heavily rooted in there um it's still cool enough I can move it um the peony I don't really want to move it I'm hoping I get some flowers this year um so most likely that rose that's the moonlight in Paris probably move here and then um, this will be a dahlia and zinnia bed so where the tulips are the tulip foliage are is I'm probably gonna plant the dahlias behind them so I kind of know where everything is because um, typically what I do is I'm, I'm not great at knowing where my bulbs are come fall when I go to plant again, but I do know and this is half the reason why I video record this is that way I know that this whole front border is pretty much open for spring bulbs. These are some mucra that I plant, put them in the ground maybe a month ago. Doing well. They'll look really nice in the summer, they'll bulk up. All right, let me show you the side and the front creeping jenny coming back that's a house i need to get in the ground somewhere but um, my hosta bed has not woken up yet so i don't really know where things are and i don't want to <sighs> disrupt anything so i'm gonna let it, everything come up and then i will plant it probably in june may june depending on everything kind of is fully flushed out So the crap shoe bed, maybe I'll call it that. <laughs> maybe something a little more endearing. This is the, maybe we'll call it the hideaway bed. Um, everything's coming back, everything looks great. Um, these are a peony, these are a Pamela Faye, Paula Faye, Paula Faye. Um, as you can see, there's no sheet mulch, there's nothing. Like they're literally plinked in the ground, the grass is growing around it. Um, so I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do here. Um, but, I'm just kind of putting things there that I know I want and then I'll either move them into beds or I'll create a bed so we'll see how this evolves as we go forward all right so nothing really going on over here there's a house that's a blue lake popping through more weeds this hydrangea looks like it's ready to go <laughs> um, some die back you know the tips are all pretty much burnt back, but that's a really good 
come back. This is the Blue Enchantress. This is a Monrovia. And this is a Monrovia. And they, oh, last year they came back. Well, this one is its first, this is going to be its second season in the ground, technically. I put it in last year. This has a bud. Oh my gosh, squirrel. Look at that. Can you see it? That's so exciting. Um, so, this will be its second full season. And this will be... I don't know how to, if you know in the comments, please leave a comment. So I bought this fall of 2022. So yesterday, last year was its first full season. And I put this in maybe May or June of last year. So they're probably around the same age, I guess, technically. Um, but, so this is, we'll call it their second year. And they're doing really, really well. More hosta popping up, some hookra. Some columbine. And then there's a random tulip, living its life. Um, this is this is an all summer beauty hydrangea that was a replacement. I had a penny mac there that died, and this is a penny mac, doing well, leafing out, super exciting. So as long as we don't have some twenty degree weather pop up, and that would be a challenge because I'm not really able to come out and cover some things, so I'd have to walk my family members through it. Whew. Lord have mercy. So I think we're probably past the worst of it. It's even in the next 10 day, I think the lowest it's supposed to get is like 34. So no hard freezes coming in, knock on wood. Not that I think that's going to make a difference, but you know, whatever, one can think. Um, so I think that it's going to be a really great year for hydrangeas. This is, what is it called? What is it called? Oh my gosh, incredible. Um, that's coming back nice and strong. Um, these, I'm actually shocked, are the Summer Crush. La like last year, all my hydrangeas died down to the ground. So the fact that there's any buds that are green is really thrilling to me. It's gonna be a really pretty July tour, <laughs> June for sure. Um, there's some pink. Tulips, what are you? Like, I have this like light little coloration on there. There's another still be some Jacob's Ladder, not Jacob's Ladder, Ladies Mantle. Ladies Mantle. Um, there's <laughs> a tulip going through Hoogra. Again, I don't know where stuff is. Um, daffodils that my daughter was supposed to cut back, she missed those. Uh, more tulips, these are the red impressions. Pretty much here. Those are some. Those are an orange double. They're really pretty. Um, twist and shout hydrangea there. All summer beauties are there. I believe those are the. I believe those, those are. Almost positive. Um, this is a pink knockout rose. At least does pretty well. Um, there's a snapdragon that survived the winter in between the side range. This is a bloomstruck that actually looks like it's going to flower. Look at that. Ah, miracles happen, friends. This is an azalea I tried to dig up and it didn't happen. So it's either going to sit there and die or um, in the side control. So, and these are the red impressions. I bought these. 2001, 2021, not 2001. Oh, Lord. Um, these are all part of a mix. Some of these red impressions, or they're part of that mix. These I planted last fall. Don't remember the name, but they're like a red with like a yellow margin. Super pretty. Um, I do tend to do more warm colors in the spring and more cool tones in the summer. Um, and then fall is kind of whatever I want. I don't really do much fall switch outs. Um, I kind of get inspired of what I tend to see at the garden center. More red tulips. So here's warm bed. But I do have a cool bed for spring color. So um, candy top looking amazing. These ice kings, ice follies, not sure. They're kind of on their way out. But they are beautiful. 
Angelique tulips. Beautiful. Um, Hoopera. These are the pink impression tulips. Beautiful. Um, these are the Obden. They actually are way taller than I thought they were going to be. They are okay. I mean, I was kind of expecting something a little bit more fluffy and pretty, but they're nice. Um, these are the Van Eyck's or something. Mystic Van Eyck's. They're pretty. That's probably a better coloring of them. These just started blooming. These have been in bloom for maybe a week now. Um, that is a wedding blushing bride, blushing by um, hydrangea that is butted up. So I'm super excited. Another still be over there. Weeds, lots of weeds. A juga. This is a anemone coming back. Never seen that. I got that late in the fall on clearance, and we'll see. Some hyacinths, kind of late blooming hyacinths. Um, this is the what's the name? Dave Ramsey hydrangea. Also butted up really nice. Um, Sun King Aurelius are popping through to survive. That's exciting. And over here is another hot mess. Um, that's the back in black. Is that what it's called? Something black is still be really pretty. Um, and there's just a bunch of like super low maintenance, low water type things over here. Um, this bed, it has horrible erosion. And it's really hard to water because my hose isn't long enough. So that's that. So I just want to thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you're having a great spring wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.